The first chapter which I will be taking up today is regarding the population, the various components of population that is distribution, density, growth and components. So, first of all I will be taking up the distribution of population. Now, there are few amazing facts regarding the population size of India. As you all know that India is according to the size seventh largest country in the world, which covers only 2.4 percent of the land area of the world. And in that land area, India is a home of 16.7 percent of the world's population. If we compare the India's size of population with the other countries, India's population is more than the population of the three major continents of the world that is North America, South America and Australia if they are put together. Now, here is a comparison of the India's population with the other countries. Look at the screens children and you will find the number. India's population is 5.5 times more than that of the population of Russia. And if we compare with it USA that is 2.8 times more than that. It is 7 times more than that of the population of UK. And the most interesting fact is its population size is 44 times more than that of the Australia. I repeat it children, this is 44 times more than the size of Australia. Now, the population of Uttar Pradesh is equal to that of the population of Japan, one of the important countries of Asia. And if we compare the population of Uttar Pradesh, this is more than few countries that is Bangladesh, Nigeria and even Pakistan. Now the question arises, if India has such a large population, so what are the consequences of that large population? Number one, poverty is the major consequence of the large population, followed by the environmental degradation. And the huge population of India results to the scarcity of resources because the people who have to consume the number is very large. So, with a wide range of social, political and economic implications, there is ethnic diversity, rural character of the population and of course, the uneven distribution of population. So, all these factors they affect the process and the phase of socio-economic development of the country. Now, had the India not been that populous country in the world as it is today, then India would have been a strong country. Population growth, had it been lower or the population size had been smaller, though India would have been a very strong country in the world. India is a land of villages. According to 2001 census, 68.84 percent of the population of India lives in villages. And when we talk about the villages, the villages are engaged in only one type of activity that is the primary activities. And if we take up the primary activities, so that means these are the activities which are unable to absorb the growing population. Now, when we count the number of people, so that means there is a terminology used for that, that is census. Now, what is census? Now, the question is how to define the word census? So, dear children, a census count offers a spectrum of population at a particular point of time covering a wide range of demographic, social and economic attributes of population. 
So for your information, children, the first complete census was taken up in 1881. And later, after every 10 years, the population counting is being done. And the last census recently had been conducted, and that was in the year 2011. Now we take up distribution of population according to the states of India. The population of India is 1,210 million, and the distribution of population is very uneven. If we look at the certain states' figures, you see UP with the largest population, and that is 166 million, followed by the state of Maharashtra, which is considered to be a very developed and urbanized state. It has the population of 96.88 million, followed by the state of Bihar, which is not very much developed state, with the population count of 82.99 million. And then we have West Bengal with 80.17 million of the population and Andhra Pradesh with 76.21 million of the population. So these five states account for about half of the country's population. Now, look at your screens, children. You can have a statistical diagram view of the population of India. As I told you that every 10 years, there's a census conducted. So this diagram, which is a bar diagram, showing the population of the different census years. If you look at the diagram, you can have a view of the curve, which is a progressive curve with every census year. So first in 1901, when the population was 238 million, the 1911 with the 252.09 million population, 1921 census, the population rose to 251.32. There's a sudden de slight decline in the population of around 1 million population in the year 1921. So we'll be taking up this issue that this decline in population, this year 1921 is known as a demographic divide year. We'll be talking about this later in the lesson. Next, 1931, with the population of 278 million. 1941, the population rose to 318. Now you see there's a gradual increase in the population. With the 1951, the population rose to 361 million. In 1961, it rose to 439 million, followed by 1971 with the population count of 548 million. 1981, 683. 1991, 846 million. 2001, 1,028 million. And the current census indicates the increase in the population, and the population has risen to 1,210 million population. Here is a political map of India showing the population distribution in the different states. It's a choropleth method used in this map, showing the various colors, indicating the population rise in the different states. So you can see the darkest color in Uttar Pradesh because I've just now told you that UP is the state with the maximum population in the India. If you see the other tints of the color followed in the states of Bihar, Maharashtra, West Bengal, on the maps you can see the location of these states also. These indicate that lower than the population of UP these states experience the population of India. 
and I have just told you that these five states count for the half of the population of India. Now the question arises, what are the causes of this uneven distribution of population in the country? There are certain factors, physical factors, socio-economic factors and the historical factors which are responsible for the uneven distribution of population. If we take up the physical factors first, so physical factors means maybe the relief, climate, soil, these are the factors which come under the physical factors. So if we correlate the availability of water with the relief and climate, so we can find that the certain areas of North India, the plains of India, the deltas and the coastal plains have the higher population because of these favorable conditions. If we take up the irrigation facilities, which are developed by the Indira Gandhi Canal. So these areas also experience the high population rate. Besides this, the relief and climate, the other factors like the minerals and the energy resources, which are available in plenty in the Chota Nagpur Plateau of India. So with the result, these areas also experience the high proportion of population. Now we take up the socio-economic factors and the certain historical factors. For example, the evolution of the settled agriculture, agricultural development, pattern of human settlement, development of transport network and industrialization. These are few socioeconomic factors which are responsible for the high rate of population in the certain areas. Now, I'll quote certain cities Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Bangalore, Pune, Hyderabad. These areas have the high concentration of population because of the two major reasons. One, the industrialization and another is the urbanization. So children, we have discussed about the distribution of population in India. Which areas experience high population and why the uneven distribution of population is experienced in the different parts of the country and the certain areas they experience a very high proportion of the population because of the favorable conditions like the relief, climate, industrialization, availability of minerals and urbanization.